Australia is sending three throwers to the 2008 Olympics. Two of them are from the Gus Wablow stable at Ringwood. With recent outstanding results, Scott Martin and Ben Harradine have both won selection to their first Olympic Games. Scott has been selected for the shot put, while Ben has secured his place in the discus. Scott's beginning in the shot put was somewhat low key. I started at school. I got uh, to the state championships, and for Donga that was a pretty big deal. Come down to Melbourne Olympic Park and compete. And I came 28th in the shot, which um, I don't know how many people were in the comp, but I'm hoping at least 29 because uh, I must have got rolled. But I thought that was red hot, so I joined up Little Athletics and. Um, within a year, I, I won the, the disc and shot at nationals, so I, I made a pretty solid improvement straight up and uh, loved it ever since. Ben's sporting options were limited when growing up, but athletics was one activity he could take part in. Um, I was born with a condition called congenital hepatic fibrosis, which is basically, uh, to the layman, congenital means uh, from birth, hepatic is liver, fibrosis is scar tissue, so I was born with scar tissue on my liver and uh, prevented me from playing contact sports. Uh, well, I did decathlon initially because um, I was tall and skinny. I used to swim prior to athletics and um, I, I s found that I was best suited to uh, throwing because I was, had long levers and I was tall. Um, and then, yeah, I, I started, I guess, when I was probably 11, seriously when I was probably 13, and then it's been sort of slowly going the way of the buffalo since then. Okay. Hold your double support. Just a fraction longer, okay? Contact with it right to here. And then we will. Scott and Ben add to a long list of international athletes coached by Gus. I help everybody. Um, back in 77, um, three young boys, Philip uh, Spivey, Mark Spivey and Russell Alfie. They saw my picture in the paper and uh, they all lived in North Altona and they approached me and I said, well, look, I train at Yarra Park at this time. You turn up, I'll be there. And Philip went on to compete at three Commonwealth Games, win a, a bronze medal, and uh, Mark is now <clears throat> the head fitness coach for the English cricket team. And then after that, um, 85, Werner came on the scene, uh, Darren Marks, Rochelle Sutton, the, the squad. Um, I got, um, in 1986, <clears throat> Werner and uh, Philip in the Commonwealth Games, and Werner also made the World Juniors, won a silver medal at the World Juniors, three weeks later won a bronze medal at the Commonwealth Games. I uh, coached Vinny Mucciatelli, who was a, a really good hammer thrower as well. Uh, Darren Marks, as I said, in the javelin. Cecilia McIntosh, silver medalist from the Commonwealth Games 2002. Um, as I said, Werner was uh, phenomenal. He still holds the, the best thrower as a junior in the world. And um, the, the, the squad has been numerous. It's, it's been uh, very large numbers of people that I've coached in that. But uh, Scott Martin and the squad at the moment, you know, is... Uh, with Ben Harradine, you know, it's probably the, the, the best quality that I've got at the moment is probably right now. Scott Martin became the cult figure of the 2006 Commonwealth Games. His appearance in a television commercial and his victory in the discus are memorable moments in Australian athletics. What can he do here? He'll need the brilliance of Barishnikov, the nerves of Nureyov, or perhaps just the muscles of Martin. He's had plenty of practice at this. Let's fly. It's flying. Fly, fly. Discus-wise, Commonwealth Games was the highlight. Um, will, will be for the, for the whole career, no matter what I do, I think. And winning at home at uh, 85,000 people was just incredible. Being able to hug Gus and hug my family after the, straight after the competition and then go out and party with them all night or something. You, you know, we had about probably 40 of my, my best friends and family come out and, and share in the, the gold medal and the experience and everything, and that's something you don't get. I'm not going to get in Beijing, even if I win gold, there's going to be three people there that I know. <laughs> oh, mate, he was just phenomenal. As I said, I tried to stand up on the fence, and he's run over, and he's hit the fence, and I'm nearly falling backwards. He's grabbed me by the legs, and I've fallen on top of him, and uh, he was so special. Also competing in the discus at Melbourne 2006 was Ben. Despite his preparations being hampered by a wrist injury, he still made the final. So uh, we basically um, manipulated our training a little bit to to make allowances for my wrist and um, I went into the final uh, of the Commonwealth Games with, I mean, I, you still expect a lot from yourself but um, I knew that I couldn't really, I wasn't at my peak or I wasn't at 100% but I was happy to be a part of that, that experience and the journey because now going to the Olympics you know what it's like in that stadium and, but yeah, it was, it was an amazing year to get there for sure. 
With Scott's focus turning to the shot put, he stepped up to another level with his performance at the Melbourne Grand Prix early in 2008. Oh yes! Oh yes, big man! That is special, ladies and gentlemen! Very, very uh, We trained really well the week leading into it, me and Gus, and uh, it was more than just uh, a good, cup, good week's training. We stepped up a lot and changed a few technical things. And I was, I was pretty confident going in. Um, I just wanted to throw 21 metres. Uh, I didn't really care about the record. Um, and, yeah, when I, I threw 21 metres in the warm-up, so I knew I was in good shape. And I think it was round three, knocked a, knocked a big one out there. And I didn't even need to really wait to see how far it was. I knew it was uh, what I wanted, and it's a, it was a good moment. Here it comes, 21-27! is a national record for Scott Martin, 21 metres 27. Ben has made big strides forward since 2006 to break the Australian discus record twice in the lead-up to the 2008 Olympics. I went over there with the, um, with, the, uh, with the Olympics in mind and I just wanted to qualify. That was the goal. I'd won the national title and... Um, and so away I went, and uh, I guess Gus just said, you know, go, go and do what you've got to do, you've got a job to do, let's get in the team. And so uh, the first competition, I arrived in San Diego, and for my first two days I was quite sick. I had food poisoning, believe it or not, aeroplane food. And, um, and uh, I was sitting there in my room, and my brother called me up, and he said, uh, how about you go and throw the qualifier now, and then you can enjoy the rest of the trip. And I was like, hey, that's probably a good idea. So I went and threw the qualifier and, and actually broke the Australian record. So I was happy with that and I could relax and it made for a, a good rest of the competition series. I love the States. It's, you know, there's good competitions and great weather. So We've got sort of three aspects to the training, probably strength. We do, uh, I'd say, about 10 hours a week, maybe more, four sessions a week. Tops uh, strength work, which is just bench press, Olympic lifts, clean, uh, clean jerks, snatches. Uh, squats, everything like that, and then we do throwing. We do probably we started off about 10,000 throws a year. We're probably down a bit now to about 5,000 now that we've become a bit better at it. Don't have to do it as much. Uh, so we do a heap of throwing, and then the other stuff is the dynamic work: sprinting, jumping, uh, sort of running up staircases, uh, plyometric work, work with the balls, uh, med balls for abs and everything like that. So it's pretty. It's in those sort of three categories, and we probably do 40% weights, 40% throws, and yeah, the 20% dynamic and plyometric. I've been a part of the Jumpstart to London program, which is um, something that's headed up by the uh, Australian Sports Commission. And um, basically what it does is identifies talented Indigenous athletes all over Australia and uh, puts them in a pool of, of athletes who they think might be um, you know, able to make London. Now that we're sort of putting that together, um, I've been able to impart knowledge of athletics to the guys that I associate with and they give me back a cultural experience and uh, it's just been an amazing journey like I've seen some amazing parts of Australia and and uh, you're taking part in a culture that you know is so strong and it's just been yeah super yeah. Um, tell us what it means for you to be selected in the Olympics uh, it's, it's interesting I mean it's, it's something I've been dreaming for a long time but it's since I've become uh, at that elite level probably for a couple of years now since 2006 since the Commonwealth Games it's been more of a, an expected thing, so I've been, I'm excited to get into the team, but I'm more excited about what I can actually do in the competition. And Well, um, obviously it's, it's a, a childhood dream, for lack of a better cliche, but um, I mean, to be selected in the team, it's, it's kind of like a fantasy, to be honest. And uh, this year, I, I sort of changed my mentality a little bit and decided that maybe it wasn't so much a fantasy anymore. And, it was actual, actually uh, something that I could achieve, so I decided, yep, this year's my year. Um, I missed out in World Champs last year, so I really wanted to secure that spot in the team. And I knew before I left to go to the States, um, I was in good shape, and, and I left, and I knew that I could throw the qualifier. I was just given the opportunity, and, and uh, now that I'm in the team, I'm super pumped. <laughs> Patient out of there.